Hey y'all, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's so great to have you guys back here watching another video. Um, today we are doing a requested video and that is reading book talk favorites. So what I'm going to be doing today is reviewing a bunch of books that I have read that apparently book talk says are fan favorites. So um, if you are interested in that, then just stick around. So I am not a TikTok queen, right? Like I don't have TikTok. I don't intend to ever have TikTok. There's nothing wrong with it for me. I just like long form content. My distractions in my brain cannot handle uh, the short form. So um, I did my research though. I looked at some favorites um, of creators that I know as well as creators that I don't and came up with this list of book talk favorites. So this is going to be part one. This is the books that I have personally read. And then part two is going to be books that I have not yet read, but will, you know, for the next video, as well as some books that I finished and didn't like or books that I DNF'd. So um, that is the plan for today. I've got six books to share with you. Um, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first book up that I'm going to talk about is this one right here. And this is a good girl's guide to murder. This book is based on a story about a girl named Pip and she is doing a school project where she is studying a true crime incident that happened in her hometown where a girl was apparently murdered by her boyfriend. Um, Pip thinks that this is not the case. You know, she's got some other ideas about what she thinks might be happening and it takes her along the path of trying to figure out who is the killer. This book is told in the form of Pip writing her journals as part of her um, school project and it is a really interesting um, way of going about the narrative style for this book. Um, I really liked it. The first 50 pages took me like a week and a half to read, I'm not even kidding, and the last 350 pages I read in one sitting. Um, so I really loved this book. I can agree with Book Talk in thinking this is a favorite. We also read this for the book club that I host over on Bookstagram and everyone really seemed to like it. Um, I'm scared to see where the series goes because I've heard that it gets a little crazy and a lot of people don't like it, but a lot of people do. So it's one of those things that I'm like nervous about if I'm going to like it or not. Um, but I definitely enjoyed this one. I guessed part of the ending, but not all of it. Um, and it definitely kept me on my toes. So uh, this is definitely a fan favorite. I would recommend it to people who like Truly Devious or to people who like Inheritance Games. I think if you like those, you would definitely like this one. Second book I'm gonna talk about, this one is Everywhere. This is called All the Light We Cannot See. Um, I also picked this one last year for a book club pick for our book club and um, everybody loved this one as well. This was one of my top 10 books of last year. It is a World War II historical fiction. It has um, two uh, points of view. It also has two timelines. Um, the timelines are very distinct um, and the way that it's done is very interesting. Um, if you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. I absolutely loved this book. This was a Pulitzer Prize winner and you can tell why. I mean, the writing is stunning. So a lot of people think this one is slow and it is, <laughs> okay? Um, it definitely is, but at the same time, the slowness is the, is the quality. Um, so it takes you on a journey. It's not just fast paced breezing through everything. It really expounds upon um, everything that you would want to know that's happening in this book. All right, so this is, like I said, a World War II story about a girl who is blind and her dad when they have to escape Paris during Nazi occupation. Um, they find refuge in a city in France um, by the sea, and they live in a tall castle type home, like a tall citadel, if you will, um, and they live there by the sea. And so this girl's dad previously worked at a museum and he may or may not have one of the world's fanciest jewels in his possession. In a dual timeline, we also have a character named Werner and he is across into Germany and it just talks about him growing up and the path that he takes growing up um, and going to school. He is very good at working with radios and fixing radios and he ends up getting recruited um, by the Nazi organization in order to work for them during the war. As you might expect, they find their way together at the end. It's a really interesting portrayal of 
loss and family, um, also what is right, what is wrong, but the author has written it in such a brilliant, brilliant way um, that I, it just tugged at my heartstrings and I really loved reading this book and I would recommend it to a lot of people. So I agree with Book Talk on this one as well. This is definitely a favorite. All right, y'all, next one up is Six of Crows. This is like Book Talk's darling. Um, Six of Crows is a really, really interesting choice for me. Um, this is in the Grishaverse, the Grishaverse, sorry. Um, and it is in the same realm as Shadow and Bone. I really like Six of Crows for its characters. <laughs> um, the plot is not my favorite. I like the plot of Crooked Kingdom more, and I actually think I like the plot of the Shadow and Bone trilogy more than the plot of Six of Crows. The characters in Six of Crows is what makes it like impeccable, right? Um, the characters in Shadow and Bone I liked, but I didn't love. Um, I liked them more in the show than I did in the book, um, but I definitely love the characters here in Six of Crows. They are complex, they are flawed, they are interesting, they are funny, um, they are loving, even if you <laughs> can't really tell. Um, but I love the characters in this book. I think Book Talk would probably agree, and I know I've seen this on Bookstagram and some on Booktube too, that the characters really are what makes this book what it is. Um, and it's just so heartbreaking. Oh my gosh, Crooked Kingdom, the second book in this duology, will rip your heart to shreds. Um, this is a good setup for that second book, um, but not my favorite by this author. All right, y'all, next one up is right here. It's Daisy Jones and the Six. So Daisy Jones is a book about a rock band in the 70s, and it basically chronicles their life as a band from when they started until they broke up. Daisy is a young girl, barely, you know, a, a young adult, and she is thrust into this rock and roll scene in the 1970s. Um, this book is everything you would expect from rock and roll. Um, it is explicit in some ways. Um, I would not recommend this for a young reader, but if you know anything about 70s, 60s rock and roll, this is it, okay? Um, as a lover of that time period and that era of music, I thought this was just an absolutely beautiful book. Um, some people have said it's not worth the hype, they just didn't get into it um, because they weren't really into the setting and the, the plot, if you will. Um, so I would say this one is for a specific type of reader. I know several people who didn't like this one simply because of the amount of um, adult content that it has and the amount that it refers to substance use and abuse, and I can see that for sure. You know, I can see why people wouldn't like it for that. Um, but if you are interested in this time period, I think you will absolutely love this book. It is written in the form of interviews, mixed media, things like that. Um, and I've heard the audiobook is fantastic with a full cast. So um, if you're at all interested in this one, I would definitely check out the audiobook. If not, the novel itself is fantastic. All right, next up is Circe by Madeline Miller. Circe is written by the same author as The Song of Achilles, which is probably an even bigger <laughs> book talk favorite. I just haven't read that one yet. Circe is a book about a witch who is banished to a remote island, and it is absolutely just like a life journey. This one's slow too, um, but it takes place over years and years and years, and it just shows how strong of a character Circe is. I talked about this in my um, bookshelf tour briefly, but Circe is like the ultimate boss. She's also just so strong. Um, she goes through life's greatest challenges and she just takes them head on. It's a story of love and family and belonging, um, but the prose in this is absolutely beautiful. So if you're looking for a book that is beautifully written but is still approachable, I think you would really, really like this one. All right, and finally, I'm gonna end it with this one for a book talk favorite, and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Addie LaRue is a book that takes place over hundreds of years. Addie has sold herself to the devil, essentially, um, and he has given her, in return for being able to live forever, he has given her um, the curse of that anyone that meets her will forget her. And 
Schwab does an amazing job in this book of writing that. I can't even imagine trying to write, but remember that every time the character meets someone, it essentially is gone. And so this book talks about um, Addie LaRue's life as she starts in the 1700s on until modern day, and just how she interacts with different figures throughout time. There are references to art that are absolutely beautiful, references to music and pop culture. Things that you'll notice along the way as you read it, and this book is absolutely fantastic. This book is really sad, um, because while it's a journey of love throughout time, everyone forgets her, you know, and it, it just, it, it makes you think about loneliness and friends and family and what it's like to be without and to have loved and to have lost, and this is not my typical type of book that I would read, but I would recommend this to honestly anyone who reads any genre. Um, again, I know some people say it's not worth the hype, it was a little slow, and I agree it's slow, um, but this book takes you on a really, really long and beautiful ride, and I can definitely agree that this is a favorite. All right, so those are the six books that I can concur with Book Talk and say that those are in fact uh, favorites. Those are definitely good books. So let me know below if you have read any of these and what you thought about them. Let me know if there's any other books you want to see in my next video about book talk. And it was great to have you all back on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, and I will see you next time. Bye, y'all.